he has been called home. If you read Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, we are told that God gave human beings a lifespan of 120 years. Psalm 90 verse 10 also says that the span is between 70 and 80. But here we are. Mr. J.C. is not 120 years. Neither was he 180 years or 70 years. But at 66, he has been called home. If we are to take the Bible as it is, that's 120 or 70 years or 80 years, then a whole lot of questions will come into our mind. Why God? Why? Why not 70? Why not 80? Why not 120? But at 66. At this point in time, Mr. Jesse had a lot of plans. After his retirement, he will want to have time with his family, with his wife, with his children, and to do some of the things he was not able to do while he was in active service. So he had a lot of plans. This is the time for him to enjoy the investments that he has made in various areas, in his wife, in his children, in his grandchildren that will come. He has plans for all of these. At this time, this is the time he will have to effectively play his role as a Busiya Penyi in the family because the fathers are going and it has come to their turn. He has a lot of plans. He had a lot of things to do. The family members, his wife, his children, his brothers and sisters, his friends, they have a lot of things they have planned for him thinking they will do together because as sister sees, he hasn't gotten to the 70 or 80 or the 120th milestone. So they have time to do some things together. Then all of a sudden, without any warning, at 66, God has called him home. Why God? That is the question many of us will want to ask. And I believe the wife has asked this question many times over. The children have done the same. His brothers and sisters have done the same. The men's fellowship and members of the Prince of Peace congregation have asked the same question many times over. But this is a question no human being can answer. Why did God do the things he has done? Nobody can give any reason for the way Mr. J.C. is lying here this morning. But if we listen to the narratives from Genesis chapter 48, it was getting to the very last end of the life of Jacob. And so his son, Joseph, had come with his children, Manasseh and Ephraim, to their father and grandfather, for him to bless them. So when they came, Joseph brought the children to him. Joseph held the hand of Manasseh in his left hand and the hand of Ephraim in his right hand and brought them straight to the father so that before the father, Manasseh will be facing the right hand side of the grandfather and Ephraim will be facing the left hand side of the grandfather for him to place his hands on them to bless them. So if he stretch his hands, the right hand will fall on the head of Manasseh, the senior brother, and the left hand will fall on the head of Ephraim, the junior brother. But instead of doing that, he crossed his hands and placed the left hand on the head of Ephraim, who was the junior brother, and the right hand of Manasseh, who was the senior brother, and started to bless them. 
but it is the first son who has to inherit. So it is he who should have the right hand placed on him. When Joseph realized that, he went to the father and said, no, father, you are doing the wrong thing. That is not the right thing for you to do. This is a senior brother, so you have to place your right hand on him rather than your left hand. And this is the junior brother, and you have to place your left hand on him instead of your right hand. So you are doing the wrong thing. Please change the, 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 the procedure. But the father told him, son, I'm not doing the wrong thing. I know what I'm doing. I know. I know what I'm doing. I'm not doing the wrong thing. Sometimes that is the case with God. Many things come to us, and we think that God should have done it this way. And so sometimes, human as we are, we may get angry, we may get frustrated, we may go to God and confront him and tell him that, God, why? You are doing the wrong thing. That is not the right thing uh, you are doing. So please do it the other way. Yes, we can go to God and tell him, no, Joseph is not 120 years. He's not 80 years. No, he's not even 70 years. So, Lord, you are not doing the right thing. Bring him back to life. Let him come back to life. You are not doing the right thing. There are so many things we have planned together. There are so many things we want to do together. So, at this point, you are not doing the right thing. Please reverse what you have done. But I believe God will be telling us that, my children, I know what I'm doing. I'm not wrong in what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And so our hymn will say that, Nyomole etonko peng, Nyomole ke eche mokwe, Wafi oko nwa hejo ye me. So God will tell us, Nimfumye, I've not wronged you. I'm not doing the wrong thing. Minim niyami ye no. Relax, I know what I'm doing. God is not wrong. He knows what he's doing. God is not wrong in calling our brother, our beloved son, and our beloved father, our beloved husband. God may not be wrong in calling him. He knows what he is doing. God knows what he is doing, and he has planned for everything. So let us allow God to be God. And yeah. So, Ebusian 4, in the midst of your confusions, in the midst of your anger and frustrations, in the midst of your disappointment about what God has done to the life of our beloved brother Richard, and the many questions that are coming up to you, which no human being can answer, I want you to take consolation in the knowledge that God knows what he is doing. He has plans for your life. He has plans for our lives. And he has plans for the life of our brother and friend, Mr. Joseph Richard J.C. He has not done the wrong thing. God says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, that he knows the plans that he has for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you not to hurt you, not to cause harm to you, plans to give you a future and a hope. So God knows what he is doing. Let us allow God to be God. For God, it is not about the number of years that you spend, the longevity of life, no. It is about the quality of life that you spend, what you use your life given to you is what you have to account for. One day God will call us to account for our lives. It is not about the number of years, but it is how you spent your life. So God has caught him at this point. Who knows that maybe God, as Isaiah has said, has caught him out of many, 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 many dangerous things that will come his way. 
God has taken him out of that. So God knows what he is doing. Let us remember that our brother and friend is not lost. God has special plans for him, plans that we do not know, plans that we may not understand. So may the Lord himself comfort all of you, especially Antipat, the children, the family members, brothers and sisters. May the Lord console you. May he comfort you. And may he help you to come to terms to the plans that he has for your life. In touching Mr. G.C., he has touched your life. In touching Mr. G.C., he has touched the plans that you have together. But God knows what he is doing. So may he console you and help you to come to terms with these very laws. May you be helped by God so that when even as you walk through this valley of the shadow of death, he will continue to comfort you. Once again, my deepest condolences to all of you. But I believe this is a wake-up call to all of us. For us to know that as Genesis said in Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, we may not live up to 120 years. And even as the psalmist said in Psalm 90, we may not get to 80 or even 70. There are some who go even younger than Mr. J.C. And indeed, there are many people who have gone younger than Mr. J.C. So we are not assured of the number of years that God has given to us. And his, in his plans, he may call us when the time comes. When God's time comes, not our time. And we don't know God's time. We know our time. We have planned for our time that after this service, we are going to Nungwa for the burial. After the burial, we are coming to this place for this or that. And after that, I'm going to this place or I'm going to that place. We have our plans and we have our time. We have planned for it. But the master plan is with God. And since you haven't seen the master plan, try to fit yourself into the master plan rather than into your own plan so that you prepare. If he should call you today, you are prepared to answer, Lord, here I am. Because that can come at any time. Nobody knows the time. We thought he might get to the 70 and even move on to the 80th birthday. But here we are at 66, he has been called. You don't know when you will be called. So allow God to plan for your life. And God has already given you a glimpse of what he intends you to do. That you give your life to him. That you serve him as your Lord. That you allow him to be the master of your life. So that whatever you do and whatever you say will be dictated by him and not by you and not by what you want or what you think you should do. If we allow him into this and we decide to do things that way, then we are falling into the plan of God. So anytime he calls, you are ready to say, here I am. At 66, Mr. J.C. had been called. Not long ago, we buried some people in their 50s in this church. We have also buried some in their 70s and in their 80s. Nobody knows. We don't know. So before your time comes, I pray that you surrender to God and allow him to be your Lord. So that in this life, as you live now, you allow him to cover you with his wings and to hide in his shadow so that when the time comes and he calls you, it is just a transition and a translation. You have moved from this point where he's the master of your life into another life where he's going to be the master of your life. This is my prayer for all of us. And may this serve us that when we came to the burial service of Mr. J.C., our beloved brother and friend, we reminded ourselves and we gave God the assurance that 
we are now going to live for him so that whenever he calls us, we'll be ready to say, I am. Once again, Auntie Pat and the children, brothers and sisters of Mr. JC, may the Lord console you. Let us pray. We will prayerfully sing the first two verses of him, 557. Yesu, me the first two verses of 557. Sit and sing prayerfully. you have for us. One of your plans for us has hit us very hard. The home call of our brother and friend, Mr. GC, is something that we have not reckoned for now. We have not planned for it, but we know that you have plans for that, and we know that you are not wrong in doing what you have done. Our prayer is that you will comfort and console us Help us, O oh Lord, to come to terms with this loss so that we will be strengthened to continue to live and to glorify your name. So we pray and commit our brother and friend, Mr. G.C., into your hands. Pray that you grant his soul a peaceful resting place in your bosom. Commit ourselves into your hands and pray that you continue to comfort us, strengthen us and lead us, Teach us what to do and how to do our things so that we'll always be ready for you. When you execute your plans, we'll not be taken on our ways, but we'll be prepared for everything that you have for us. Lead us on, O Lord, lead us, and we give the glory to you because you are our Lord. We have prayed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
May we all stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. In an ordinary If I never knew what share of I shall for late, maybe I had a baby for a year. I foreign you are born once. You are the Pierre Bussian and Ma, a de Pierre Machi. Any lie any more say, I send with a two wa, nay a car. Dear sir, you are come a mo. Nama, Fasher, I didn't hear you. Won't you on ya? When I feel coni, what a while will cook a bee. Ja, oh, trimmy. Call him while a mini ocean for lay. It is time for offer tree. And I'm pleading that we give and give willingly and cheerfully. We are giving to the family. We are coming only once. Church choir.
Fatalo, <laughs> One papa find your journal. Connie no, I hear Buame. One papa fire. By Joe of a carefully no. You're going to want to tell a pillar and more concord. Amen. Announcement fuel Why, 
bona fe konika o ka me pe ni o ka fale ko te se wo ba cho wo ba ji ame wo cho nyi konika o na le no cheleke igbe ko nta wa mo ko ni o ke o che igbe eh ye wo o sofo bebere wo suru ha na ansa na ye mpese wo hu omo a wo beta po ni ko ti na china ka se papa papa no me pese wo mbo ni din ye nti me bo o sa fo ni katkis fo mo wasro ha no me bo bi adin se no nsu ye na wo hia no a na wa ko be bi a owo no wo o sa fo ni kanyongo ye mo ha wo lebi ne a chole reverend doctor victor oko abi laji district minister for community 2 le no ji Minister in charge, Prince of Peace Congregation, and immediate past Presbytery Chairperson. Why, Reverend Dr. Ifa Abebio, Kehifatalo. Wa Osafo ni wakele chuni ye biye e ye kumase, ebo mwadi ya huwe bashe biye, nya wacho awadi wa wahame. Ete hejomo retired. Why are also for Reverend Ebenezer Akron, Committee One District Minister, and Lenore Minister in charge of Greenwich Presbyterian Church? Why are also for Reverend David Aglo, Minister in charge of Feasts Congregation and National Boys Brigade Coordinator? Why are also for Reverend Daniel Augustus Ajay, Minister in Charge of Grace Congregation, Nungwa? Why are also for Mrs. Justina Kwoko Ashley, Minister in Charge of Mount Zion Presbyterian Congregation? Agbene, why are Katkis Otumasi retired? Katkis Elizabeth Bramadu retired. Lahu Eyabie. Katkis Angelina Nikwe Pistis Congregation. Katkis Mrs. Rita Kwesi Dentra, Committee 3. Moni nye hiye ni akefe so le moleji last person. Katkis Mrs. Faustina Akushika Udai. If I know any was share, I will allow a closing him. Sorry, announcement it in your jacket. Can we just be a we could buy our May 20. I was in a phone number my number 20. As a phone money, as a phone pen money, number five, 25. Ya kwa nungwa zimaman cemetery. Nungwa zimaman cemetery. Wa fe nu wa basha ya se. If I know one year, what can watch on Ben and all, or share PV or Ben run about there? Cash a few of us, Jamme, while Yale are born, Yan for Yajam of Anna Canopia, you take. While Yajam, I told them a peace village. The war Jamme, where I care on Agbe, of Anaka, as a phone, you could be a bad chum book. The war woman, yes, you have fair one year peace village. May cut a crown, it is twenty five fair pen, your Zimmerman cemetery. Yeradon. Wafe wabate shikoni wala Presbyterian him 833-833. Wala first two stanza se.
well, since my father-in-law, Papa Ifa Bebio, is here, I will respectfully invite him to pronounce the benediction. Papa Ifa Abebio. The benediction. The mortal should give way to the immortal, and the perishable should give way to the imperishable, and the corruptible should give way to the incorruptible. And when the mortal gives way to the immortal, and the perishable gives way to the imperishable, and the corruptible gives way to the incorruptible, then you have power to ask. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sin? The Lord Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought immortality to life. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.
resume your seat. The agents will lead, then the gaskets will follow as we are going out, men's fellowship and the few of the family members will follow. After which all well wishers will pass through the wings. Osafoya ke katiki swe ba ba nye hie ake adeka ba nye se we ku kotokro ke men's fellowship ba cha no ye fa na me ni eshe fe wo ye shina iko ye wo ko no ko no gbe wo cho he ni osafoya ba cho because ka wo she je me pe aba chi gate e wo fa ne no cho ne ke ala o si o ba me ka wo fe wa jepo wota dani nye ba jepo ye fa na nye yura don